Good Saturday morning, friends. Mark Holmes, of course, here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here and let's wake up the football gods here this Saturday morning. And today I want you to take a look here, guys. I'm, I'm about to cry. We are only 75 days, 10 hours and 45 seconds away from kickoff of the 2022 season where, you know, it, it's funny that the NFL heard a few years ago that the NFL, it was going away. The NFL, the concussions, the NFL, the, the problems with players off the field, it's dying. The NFL may be more popular now than ever before. It is literally growing worldwide. The fact that each team is literally dubbing and doubling in value, that the salary cap is going through the roof. Players are making more money than teams used to have as a salary cap as an individual. We as fans that are sitting here, you're watching me right now talking about the Dallas Cowboys in the silly season where there's nothing going on. Nothing. They've taken things like the combine, but literally just workouts and turned those into a, an event that is covered worldwide. The NFL is a juggernaut, and we are basically drug-addicted fans that can't get enough of the NFL. Case in point, tomorrow, Chantilly, Virginia, CSA show. I'll be there. I'd be there today, but there's no Cowboys today. Now, Jalen Hurts is going to be there today between 1245 and 115. I should go just to troll some Eagle fans, but i just not that into you. Not like you Eagle fans that, that literally live on this channel. But tomorrow, we'll see Micah Parsons. Micah Parsons, the lion, will be there. He won't sign anything that's not NFL licensed, so there's that. But... We're going to definitely see the lion. And another person that we are interested in seeing is Jalen Tolbert, our third round drafted wide receiver that we need to be ready come the beginning of the season. Six foot one, not bad with the route tree, may be actually a steal for the Cowboys. Now, the thing that's interesting about the Dallas Cowboys is this. The Cowboys have actually had quite a bit of success getting receivers in the third round. Michael Gallup, who just signed his extension, of course, third round drafted wide receiver, was not that highly touted, but you look at what he's actually become and you say he's pretty, pretty good. How about in 2013 when the Dallas Cowboys traded back to get Travis Frederick, picked up an extra third round pick, and they took uh, Terrence Williams. Now, I'm not going to say Terrence Williams was uh, the greatest wide receiver that we've ever had. But Terrence Williams was a pretty good one. And had it not been for some problems late in his career and some injuries, probably would have played a lot longer. And he played some valuable games and valuable minutes for the Cowboys. And could Jalen Tolbert be the next in line for those wide receivers that the Cowboys pick up in the third round that end up paying big dividends? Well, let's listen to actually what Mickey Spagnola actually had to say about him. Let's go to the tape. There's been a lot of discussion about Smith, and you've mentioned Williams to us and Tolbert and Ferguson or whatever. Is uh, Tolbert seems to me that the Cowboys do a really good job with these receivers that they get that are after the first round, that are maybe a Michael Gallup or you know, others around, along the way. You think the same thing can happen Tolbert. with Jalen Tolbert? Uh, not only do I think it could happen, it really needs to happen. Uh, because, you know, if you look at it, with chances are Gallup's not going to be there uh, for the start of the season, could miss a month. Um, uh, CeeDee Lamb's going to take on a role that he hasn't had previously, meaning being the number one wide receiver. Uh, they tried to fill in the gap with James Washington, uh, and they're going to try to rely on him more than he's ever been relied on during his four years in Pittsburgh. So to me, they need somebody else to step up. And, you know, just from what I've seen of Tolbert, uh, I, I think it looks like a logical choice 
Uh, he, he's, he's versatile. It looks like he can play all three wide receiver spots. Uh, catches the ball. Um, seems to run good routes. Sharp kid. Uh, and the other thing I noticed, I don't remember if I told you guys this last, the last couple times, but in that last, uh, it, well, in the last, the only mini camp practice, uh, he was back there fielding putts. And he had a very natural ability to field punts that I didn't know that he had. You know, you can tell if it's natural for guys uh, like CD. When, when, when he goes back there to field a punt, it's like he's a magnet and the, ball, the ball's just coming right to him. Uh, it's not a bunch of stutter steps. It's not like going back, coming forward, moving to the side. He's always right underneath the ball. And I saw that out of Tober. Uh, and if they're planning, you know, more snaps, more opportunities for, for Lamb, I don't know that you want him back there catching all the punts. And remember, his sidekick catching punts last year was Cedric Wilson, who's no longer here. And I didn't see anybody else maybe capable of doing that uh, other than maybe Trayvon Diggs. But if you're forcing a punt, that means Trayvon Diggs has been out there playing four, five, six, seven snaps. And now you want him to go back and and catch punts. So I I think what they need is the guy that's kind of the safety returner to just catch the ball. And this kid looks like he can do that. And then you would have the ability, if it's an offensive return, to put Lamb or maybe even Diggs out there. Mickey, how big a camp is this for Tristan Hill? Uh, I think it's... uh... Oh, it's a big camp for Tristan Hill. This is do or die for Tristan Hill. Tristan Hill may actually be on the bubble, so um, we'll we'll deal with Tristan Hill later. Right now, we want to talk about Jalen Tolbert, who we're going to be seeing uh, tomorrow. We'll get our first look at Jalen Tolbert, and I can't wait. You know, he's a, a really good route runner. Um, he's very athletic. He's six foot one. And here's the thing that, you know, I know that people, you're either a Dak fan or a Dak hater, okay? There's no in-between with, with people, okay? You've heard so many of the talking heads always trash Dak Prescott. But here's the thing. Numbers don't lie. If you take a guy like Randall Cobb, and I'm going to take Randall Cobb because it's a perfect example. He had the bad man Aaron Rodgers throwing to him. And over the course of the last three, four years of him being in Green Bay, his numbers went downhill. They went downhill to the point where Green Bay said, we're just going to release you. They didn't try and trade him. They just released him because they figured he's done. He was down to averaging 10.1 yards per reception. And that's with Aaron Rodgers, who everybody says is the baddest quarterback on the planet. He comes to the Cowboys and he averages more yards per reception than he has in any other year in his career. 14.9. That's better than any year he had with Aaron Rodgers. Cowboys, of course, let him go. Got a compensatory pick. Let the Texan pay him a boatload of money. And an interesting thing with Deshaun Watson, his numbers went back to 10.9 per reception. To the point where the Texans were kind of like, Man, we paid too much. They let him go. Green Bay brings him back. Now understand, he's going back with the baddest quarterback in the NFL, Aaron Rodgers. And he goes back to about 11 yards per reception. And you can look at many wide receivers. You can look at Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper's best years were actually with Dak Prescott, not with Derek Carr. We'll be able to see if Deshaun Watson gets on the field if Deshaun Watson is able to elevate Amari Cooper to those levels or not, we just don't know. Um, But we'll be able to compare apples to apples because now you can say we've got two receivers that have been with Dak and with Deshaun Watson, and we'll see how those two receivers interact. Um, But more times than not, the thing that is interesting is wide receivers with Dak Prescott end up seeming like they're achieving more than they have elsewhere. So if you get a guy like Jalen Tolbert, who, again, you know, he's uh, a third-round draft pick. He's going to be a rookie. He's new there. Having CeeDee Lamb now as the number one, um, probably James Washington and him will be splitting time in in the slot and things. Um, We'll see where that goes. 
But you look at that and say he has a great opportunity to elevate his game because the interesting thing that seems to happen, you know, when we always are told that, you know, well, the Cowboys, they got great talent and great receivers and stuff. It seems like when the receivers that were playing so well with the Cowboys leave and go elsewhere, they're not the same guy. So the question you have to ask is, is it all the receiver and they're a great talent and it translates everywhere? Or are they a product of Dak Prescott and the system that's elevating their game? I think it's the system as well as Dak Prescott that is elevating the game. Because the bottom line is this. When the Cowboys offense was clicking, in the first eight games of the season, that offense was clicking. There are too many weapons to stop. You can't focus in and say, we stopped Zeke Elliott, we're going to stop the Cowboys. Because the receiving core, and it wasn't just one guy, all of them could do damage. Even a guy like Dalton Schultz, who had the highest QBR quarterback rating when thrown to in the NFL. He's not going to break a whole lot of tackles, but you can guarantee you that he's going to be a possession guy. When you had a guy like Amari Cooper who could run great routes, or if you had a guy like CeeDee Lamb who could take it to the house, there's too many things to stop you. And I believe having a Tony Pollard in the mystery that's going to be Tony Pollard, is he a running back? Is he a slot receiver? He's going to be moved all over the field. It's giving defensive coordinators something to think about. With a healthy Zeke Elliott and a better offensive line, Zeke Elliott will be able to pound the rock. Thus, as the third wide receiver down the line, you're not going to get the attention that CD is or Tony Pollard is or Zeke Elliott is. And you will be that guy who will feast because of what the others do. And I think it's a great situation for Jalen Tolbert, knowing that <clears throat> um, Michael Gallup may not be ready to start the season. This is a way to go ahead and carve your niche out and grab a hold of the position and run with it. And so with that being said, I got a lot of work to do between now and tomorrow because we've got to get our stuff together for the autograph signing show. I believe it starts at 11 and I have some pieces that I need to do as well as going to a birthday party that I have to dress up and wear a suit in. I hate wearing suits hate wearing suits. I've already told my wife, if you bury me in a suit, I will come back and haunt your ass. I, I just can't. I, I just can't. I, I just like, just give me a paint covered Joe Boo sports or Woodboard t-shirt. Okay. And, and some jeans bury me in that. So I can be comfortable in the afterlife. And with that being said, you know what time it is. It's time to get up out of here. Our coach here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report.